What about those people who, so we talk about pronation and the term overpronation is thrown out a lot. What yeah. about people who are worried about going the other way? The people yeah. usually say, I have a high arch. What should I be thinking yes. about with stability? Or I supinate. What should I do if I, I right. run on the outside of my foot? Right. What do we think about stability in those? I put stability again in air yeah. quotes because of the yeah. nebulous nature of it. What do right. we think about it for people in that category? And how do you approach that from a shoe perspective? You know, it, regardless of which motion, even if you go too far lateral, you need people, you need just as much of attention, right? And I think what's really nice is instead of just going, oh, we're only going to handle people that go inner, inside, a lot of these shoes are, are are intentionally putting some of these messes on the outside because the goal is not to force you in one direction, is to keep you more centered. So people that supinate or they, they supinate beyond what they can they can handle – there is plenty of stuff. It, even a lot of traditional medial stability shoes, you're seeing sidewalls on the outside. The Tempest is a great option where you've had the, the concept of stability on both the lateral and medial side of the foot. Um, what I'm thinking about, the, the Hoka Araki was actually an early early start to this. where And, and the same thing with the, the Brooks shoes where you have a guide rail on that lateral side. So it's trying to keep you centered. So people that have the sensitivity to going too far out – it is important. You can find stuff like the shoes that have lateral sole flare or lateral sidewalls. There are now more options for you and even in the racing stuff that you'll see. So that is important to pay attention to. But you have to figure out, is that motion actually causing you a problem? Because oftentimes you'll kind of see it on a treadmill and you'll kind of freak out because people use the term over supination or over pronation. And you have to realize we actually haven't defined a specific amount of what that – like a certain number of degrees that's considered over pronation or over supination. I remember once somebody suggested that it might be 10 degrees, but that's just what you can see visually, right? Like because yeah. anything under 5 to 10 degrees you can't really see. So yeah. nobody's confirmed that this degrees of pronation or this degrees of supination causes issues. It's, right. hey, I tend to go a little too far out this way and I'm having some issues that are associated that, that tissue is being stretched – by that motion. So logically, I wonder if this might help. Yeah, you can find that. I do have to comment really quick. Your arch height has not been found to be a predictor of injury risk because you're looking at static, right? You got to look at it moving. There's been some very good military studies that have looked at, hey, is prescribing shoes based on arch height a valid way of changing injuries? And the answer was no. There's almost no influence on prescribing shoes based on arch height. So I'm really encouraged. Yes, having a higher lower arch in terms of like the amount of insole in the shoe, some people will notice, right? Is that lining up? Is that comfortable for you? But don't assume the height of your arch necessarily has is indicates what level of stability or what what you need. It's more the motion and if you're having issues associated with that motion that's more important. Right. Do you have any thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah, I Maybe a few. I think what I think it is interesting. Yeah, matching shoe type or foot type to shoe doesn't work. Nope. People who have it's it's funny how we spend so much time talking about pronation and pronation related injuries, but those who have n like very rigid arches, um, yeah. there is a higher rigid, risk for yeah. people with yeah. that type of foot for bone stress injuries, yep. and so. I think it's funny that we don't give that as much attention, but what I do think is really helpful is this it are, are all of the cushion type shoes that are out there. And yeah. I think that that might be your best bet is finding something that has some lateral sole flare and a good amount of cushion. That might be something to try. And if it's comfortable, cool. I also think about some of these shoes are starting to have more. I think it's more common to have a lateral heel bevel um, yeah. in shoes and my personal take on that, unless it's something extreme like the Audios Pro 2 was, yeah. I wouldn't let a lateral heel bevel scare you away from from a shoe if you are someone with more of a, who feels like you run on the outside of your foot. That bevel part won't impact the entire part of your gait, in my opinion. Um, I don't know if you disagree with me on that, Matt, but usually they're they're a little bit more mild and just yeah. they just make that landing smooth, but they're not pushing yeah. you out to the outside most of the time. But do you have a different yeah. opinion on that? Um, not really. I th it does come down to individual people because I've had individuals that tend to go a little far out where they've been very sensitive to that, but other ones are like, yeah, it's fine. It'll depend on where the motion is. Um, and I'm trying to remember there is some research on bevels that I found on like lateral bevels that I found recently. And I, they think they can s like slow down motion in terms of how quick you're going medial. 
Um, but to, to what degree each person is going to respond to that, it's going to vary depending on where you land, where you the land. speed of where you're going, right? It, so, yeah, I, I mean, I don't think you should be afraid of anything unless you know from experience that that thing you don't tend to work well with. Right. So, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. 